Detroit, New York. Today, we've got an AFC East matchup between the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills. And we are underway in Buffalo. This fielded right at the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Terry to get the drive started. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Oh, Allen cannot get away, and down he goes. Emmanuel Agba that time able to drop him for a loss. And just two plays in, and Charles already their first sack defensively. Yeah, how about that? That didn't take long, did it? And now they look at third down, and that's another time to try and go and get the quarterback, too. A little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Allen. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. Melvin Ingram. Dropping the hammer off the edge. On fourth down, Matt Ariza sent on to punt. Jalen Waddell deep to return it. And they won't get a chance to bring this one back. It goes out of bounds, back near their own 20. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 23. They'll run here with Raheem Mostert. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. You don't see that a ton, do you, with a cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle? That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field sees that the ball is moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked up by Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. Before we came up to the booth, last thing he said as we were walking off the field, want to play mistake-free football. Well, that just went out the window there with a pick. And do you remember what you said to me when we were walking up to the booth after he said that? You're like, oh, fatal last words. Every time we hear that, things tend to fall apart a little bit. And that's what we saw there. Didn't get enough on that throw, and it turned into an interception. A quick first down pickup. Good start after going three and out on their opening drive. Going to give this one to Singletary. And he is going to lose yardage here. A nice stick and stop for a loss here from Jalen Phillips. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. They go right back to Singletary. Two yards gets them back to where they started, but now third and ten. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Throwing his Allen on third. And it's caught. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They run here with Singletary. And he is into the end zone for the Buffalo touchdown. 
A one-yard touchdown run for Devin Singletary. And the Bills take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Here's the Bills' kickoff unit out as they will send this one away. Here comes Jalen Waddle from his end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20 to the 25-yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Things a lot different than the last time they were on the field. Remember, they threw the interception, gave up the touchdown, and now trailing 7 to nothing and looking for a response. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And the pressure gets there, and Tua's going to be taken down. That's Gregory Rousseau getting in there to bring him down. Well, that's an excellent way to get the pass rush activated. The first sack of the game for them comes on the first play of the drive, and it makes it very tough for the opponent to pick up a first down now, playing behind the sticks. Throwing on second and long. Tua, pass over the middle, tipped, but he still brings it in. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. on third down. Tua sets up to pass it. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. Ed Oliver that time to want to get in there and bring him down. A third and long, you knew that he was going to throw it, but he just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield in coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. Now that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Throwing now is Allen. Looking for Diggs, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Xavier Howard. And the Dolphins will have solid field position here as they take over at their 45-yard line. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw, or maybe the ball's tipped, or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. That's going to be caught by Waddle. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. 
from the 35 on second down. Tua, that's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Tua finding Gesicki there for a Dolphin first. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed, and on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now Tua. They'll get this underneath Edmonds. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion. But give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort. Turn it into a successful play. Now the first carry for Chase Edmonds. And this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done. Down to the 15 from the 21. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Well, I see an extra defensive back on the field. A little surprise here on third and one. They go back to the ground, this time Moster. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Raheem Mostert, 15 yards. And the Dolphins are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. Tie ball game, still a little more than a minute to go in the half. The question, can they put something together here, try to take that lead into intermission? I would have to think that would be the goal for sure. I don't think you sit on anything here. Here's your opportunity, push it downfield. As you mentioned, it's a tie game. So minus a disaster on your part, you've got that in your back pocket. Go ahead and try and get some points and feel great going into the half. Throwing again on second down, Allen. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. So after the sack, Allen and the Bills with work to do on third and long. Looking to throw, Allen. And that ball incomplete, nearly intercepted. Took a chance with that one. It'll lead to a fourth down. Matt Horizon now on to punt this one away. Waddle now to return it. A nice punt, but a good run back as well, 13 yards. And it'll be Dolphin football. Here we go. The Dolphins at the line, ready for their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, congratulations to them. They come through defensively with another stop. And let's face it, this secondary, they've gone unchallenged so go. far in the first half. Line of scrimmage again to 37 as they line up second and 10. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And his throw is incomplete. And they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get the momentum going again. Yeah. 
Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Oh, looking for Waddle, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Micah Hyde. And the Bills will have solid field position here as they take over at their 45 yard line. Partner, when you're playing cover two, this is like a tag team for the safeties. Each of them gets a hot field responsibility. Their job stay as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone, read the football, and go make a play. In this case, the free safety made the best play an interception. Well, this defense is going to have to finish the job. There's still a second half that they have to play. But so far, an absolute total effort. They've disrupted the passing game, stressed the pocket for the quarterback. Oh, Allen cannot get away, and down he goes. Now whistles in a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So after the sack, Allen and the Bills with work to do on third and long. A final shot before half for Allen. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Final adjustments being made for the second half. So with that... We get you back up to Orchard Park and rejoin Brandon and Charles. And we welcome you back now. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, getting set for quarter number three here. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. Waddle will return this from the end zone. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Ready? Again, they'll run it with Moster. And he'll take this across the 25 before going out of bounds. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call, mark off the five, and keep it moving. So after the penalty, here's second and three. Up the middle they go with Moster. And down he'll go at the 25. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. But partner, the defense isn't going to adjust, and they keep giving them those five, six, seven-yard runs over and over. They're likely to run it the whole way to the end zone. They'll be more than happy to take the yardage available and save some of their other plays in the playbook for another time. On first and ten, it's Moster, and he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Now they'll throw with Tagovailoa. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Credit the sack to Von Miller. We are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game. Yeah, absolutely going toe for toe. Just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit. Is there any way they can find something that can pop something big to knock them back on their heels? Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. And here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. McKenzie now to return it. A nice return there of 11 to help mitigate a good punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. The 
Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Quick throw out wide, caught by Crowder. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. That one good for 17 yards. And now they've got it first and goal. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. They pitch it out to Singletary. And he is going to lose yardage here. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. We knew both of these safeties were good in run support, but how about the play we just saw there? How about that closing speed? Able to get to the outside part of the field and turn that play into a loss. On second and goal, Allen. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. Allen now on third and goal. Out to the flat here for Johnson. So no gain on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. Well, a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. We have played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and six, just inside the 30. Now a give to Mostert running right. And some space here. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. Play action, now it's Tua. And this will be well too low for him to bring in. It's incomplete. I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there? The leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Back to the air on second down. Tonga by Loa. Over the middle complete. It's Hill. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. A tackler almost on the spot, that means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. On third down, they run with Edmonds. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. A Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. I definitely like the play call. You don't expect it on third and five, third and six, do you? You expect a pass play. Had a little courage there to call the run, and boy, they were successful. 
So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 41. Off of play action, Tonga by Lower. He'll buy and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Von Miller picks up his second sack of the afternoon. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. From midfield, here's Tua. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Well, partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. He is going to find Hill here. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 26. And now the Bills are going to stop it as they call a timeout. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Now a run straight ahead with Edmonds. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Hey, thank you. Tua going to tap this forward on the jet sweep. And he is going to lose yardage here. This defense not fooled one bit on that touch pass. And this has become one of those kind of in vogue plays. You know, kind of like the shuffle pass was a few years ago. This one never got off the ground, but you understand why a lot of teams are running it. These wide receivers, a lot of them, they run like running backs with the ball in their hands. So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. Throwing now is Tugabailoa. He'll get it once more into the hands of Hill. And now here comes the third of their timeouts defensively. So they'll be left with only the two-minute warning to stop it from here on out. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. Back to the running game with Mostert. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked out before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And they have just not been able to block him at all throughout this game. Seems like every other play, he's doing something in the backfield. Already got two sacks, and now here's a tackle behind the line. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. Ready. Second down, here's Mostert again. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Now Tua. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Taken down for the fifth time this game. Multiple defenders there to get him. And it has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. So a big one coming now for Jason Sanders. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Yeah. 
Sanders kick is good. And that will tie this game here in the final minute of play. So a big kick to get this back to even. Yet now the worry is, did you leave too much time on the clock? Because another field goal the other way, that does you in. You're exactly right. You didn't get into overtime yet. So now as a defense, you've got to think to yourself, you can't play prevent defense and just give up big chunks of yardage in front of you. But you also can't let anyone behind you. So you sit right on the line between the two, play the best defense you can, and not make it easy for them to move the ball downfield. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. Well, partner, here it is. They've got the chance to win the game. You'd have to think they need to get it near the opposite 40 to have a chance to kick a game-winning field goal. We'll see what they can do. And you're right about that, because if we look at it in macro, that's what it looks like. But I think in micro, the head coach has already asked the special teams coach, what is he feeling? What does he think? Where does he want the football? What's the yard line we have to get? And he's already relayed that to his quarterback and his offense. They know what the goal is. Now the key, can they get there? Oh, a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does. And in the second quarter, he may very well run by him. But in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. And he finds Howard complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Allen. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Davis. And the spike comes with just 12 seconds left to go. Accepted. Nick Needham picks it off. And he'll take this all the way down inside the 40. Well, we say it often, Charles, but not all interceptions are created equally, and that is a big one here in a tie ball game in the fourth quarter. And Brandon, when games are this close, it usually comes down to the team making the fewest mistakes, and that was one of our mantras back at Tennessee. Coach Murphy say all the time, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. You've got to cut those down to give yourself an opportunity. And he missed it. It's no good. And a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So the Bills going to be the first to get it as we are back underway here in overtime. McKenzie now from his end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And everyone knows the OT rules, Charles, but pretty simple formula. They go down and get a field goal. We continue play. But if they can find the end zone on this possession, ball game over. And as meticulously as all teams plan for a game, I don't doubt for a second on that offense coordinator's play sheet. He's got some overtime plays that he wants to run. I know it sounds crazy, but they plan for everything. First and 10 all the way throughout the game, second and seven, whatever. Right now, he's looking at that play sheet saying, if we get to overtime, what can we break out that they haven't seen? And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. There's Stephon Diggs for the catch on the slant. Finding room at midfield. And he'll have it past midfield, almost to the 40, before being taken down. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. 
Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage, got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride. He was able to run free after the catch. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. This a quick pass to Davis. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Again, they'll throw with Allen. Sliding out of the pocket. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he nearly got the first himself, but it appears he's going to be about a yard or two short. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? And he's got a man. It's the tight end Howard complete. And he is going to have the Bills first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. And the drive stays in motion with a nice eight-yard pickup on fourth. Allen now on first down. That's brought in by Davis over the middle. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive. Oh, and it's intercepted. Picked off, Byron Jones. And the Dolphins are going to have it with a chance to win the game here in overtime. Gigantic play by this defense, Charles. So they came back in the fourth quarter, took the momentum into overtime, and now they take the football. And how do you think the team that just threw the pick feels right now? They surrendered the lead, got to overtime, had a chance to redeem themselves, and now they put the game in jeopardy with another pick. And guess what? Their defense has to hold. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it, and it's second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. All right, what can Tua do now with his drive in OT? So they've got the football, and they'll start right on the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. So, CD, both teams have had it here in overtime, and both have thrown an interception. And now this offense perfectly set up for a second-chance opportunity. Already in field goal range, don't do anything crazy here. Just set it up and let your kicker win the game. And he got it! The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And the Bills are going to get out of here winners. A lot more was on the line in this one than just defending your home field, CD. They defend their home field against a division rival and get the victory, so this one feels a little extra special. It has to, right? There's always just a little more emphasis on games like this. Everyone talks about playing each game the exact same way, but you and I both know that is not 